<clears throat> Welcome everybody. <clears throat> Shall we begin? Let's begin. Kenny said we could begin. Okay. I'm going to do a lot of talking because things happened to me in the last two weeks that changed the way I see the world. And I'm going to give you a very brief talk about that, but as the next weeks go by, I'll elaborate. What I'd like to do first, before anything else, is to celebrate America's July 4th. We are not at war. Somehow, we are among the few areas in the world which aren't planning or involved in another war. Everything you could do with Ukraine and Russia conflict. I wonder when the next bomb will hit here. Not from them. But we can't seem to learn that we don't need to kill each other because maybe we do. So let me begin with this wonderful period of two weeks because we didn't speak to you last Monday because we were gone and we couldn't carry all the equipment and didn't know where it would be. So let me begin and tell you how my view of the world changed. And I'd like you to go with me on that journey. First I said we should celebrate with gratitude. We are not at war. In a universe, in a world where everybody wants something from somebody else, and seems to get it through death. I want to celebrate that we're here. And I wrote down everything that I wanted to talk about today. And it began with a question when I asked my grandchild just a short while ago, Jesse, how do you see the world? And Jesse, who is now in her early 20s, and I am 93, knew that this was not a childish question. And she said, I see that nothing in the universe remains the same. It, nothing dies. It just changes its shape. And it made me think, who changed and into what shape? And I'm beginning to think that part of the gift we have of not ever disappearing, but remaining in a different shape, in my case, seems to be memory. What if memory is a shape, an energy, a space where all that we want to remember waits for us? All I have to do is to remember somebody and bring them back. Not in the shape they once were. But they're there. That's one thing I found out about. But I need to talk about the freedom I had of thinking. First, that changed me. I'll be speaking about these items for forever. But today I'll just touch upon them and the salient points. I was invited by JCC 
of Middle Village, I think it was Middle Village, Middle Town, Middle something, in the middle of Long Island. I had never been that far. And they picked me up and we drove. And it was for a luncheon that they were giving for Holocaust survivors. I am one, but I've never felt like one because even though when I think back to being hidden for six months in our own apartment and not being able to make a sound in case the Nazis would find us, Speaking of gratitude, nobody told on us that we were there. It must have, what are the results of the things that happened to us? I became an artist who hid in corners. I'm comfortable if nobody sees me. And look at me now on Facebook with people speaking to me from all the way to Sweden. From Sweden. Thank you, Kent. And I'm going to speak about how what we have in life is not a solid. It translates into something else. For me, it translated into the eight-year-old who said, but people don't hurt people they know. Maybe I have to start painting and drawing real people and then after a while nobody will hurt anybody anymore because they'll know them. And it's what I'm still doing today. That's that period of time. But I did not suffer in a concentration camp as Anne Frank, whose life was so similar to mine, did. Or as the man I married, Eric, who did. When he was 16, he went into the first concentration camp. There were many, many more. What came out of it? A need To not be like others. Whenever I would say, but they do this or that, he would hold my hand and he would say, but we are not the other people. And he learned that he couldn't live with the hate he had in him. Because if you're in a prison, you cannot hurt a guard. And he began here in America to counsel prison inmates because he knew what they felt. From everything that the world gives us, we decide what to do with it. And from that, I realized I made a list because I didn't want to talk too much on one topic. Last minute, you're right, you're right. Then we had a visit with friends in Nantucket. Now that is going to be a whole thing by itself. Let me just say, these were people who treated us without care of how much they gave. They just, they took us in a private airplane. They fed us. They let me draw them. And I have to learn from long types, long types, talks rather, 
no long types of talks with Kimberly about owning and giving back. Then I had two days with my daughter and I learned from her things that she taught me and that is if you don't tell people what you need they can't give it to you. Speak. And I'm learning every day from my son, Kenny. Because at night we speak of what we call an inner mentor. And we speak of what we fail to see and act upon. And what that inner mentor is telling us to do. And when I came home, after these trips, and I unpacked. I didn't know where to put things because I packed for different things. And I suddenly realized I have too much. And it led to the final thought before I do this. I cannot stop filling my life. Like the universe, it keeps on going. It doesn't know when to stop. It gives me water, and then it gives, becomes a flood. It gives me sunlight, and then it becomes drought. Maybe you and I in the universe are working together with the same not knowing of when to stop getting possessions. It's easy with clothing. I can give it away, and I do. I'm going to paint. On this, what I want to tell you, I decided I haven't been teaching you the glory of oil. So right now, I gave myself, first of all, let me cover myself because I warned you about oil. Mm -hmm. I got rid of my old paints, which is not what I do. Refugees are, fr are very frugal. In other words, cheap. We don't throw things out. So before I started, I threw away all my old dried out colors. Not the paints. I used them all up, and the ones I couldn't use because they had gotten dirty, I got rid of. But look at this beauty. Can you see this, Kenny? Hmm. Okay, and to honor it, I am going to begin and just turn to my favorite color, red. Okay? Why don't I begin? Kenny found out that if I am facing the item that I'm painting, my hand doesn't shake so much. Uh, Kenny, I hate to tell you, but this is the table that you used to love. And my wonderful Gary, who arranged this room for me, He took this table from Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Okay, so let me go to Johanna first of all. Let me put this. I'm warning you. I have too many possessions because I keep adding things. I keep adding and adding because I can't stop. Now let's see, if I go like this, and I'm still waiting for Dina and Jeff to create something for my hand so that nothing shakes. Okay? Let me first 
with Johanna. Okay? You will get to know the people that I'm doing because I will tell you about them. Johanna is somebody I have known for so many years. Johanna ran a school of alternatives for, for dropouts from school. And we got to know her that way. And I'm not the only one who recognized her talent because in the Herald they called the Woman of the Year. And by the way, know the glory of oil. I changed her sleeve because she's very graceful and the black sleeve wasn't graceful enough. So how will I make her be beautiful as she is? Okay, in this hand, I was going to draw the, I was going to paint these two with all of you watching, but I changed because I really got to know both of them. And as I'm going to, and I don't want to work from the photograph they gave me. And when I don't work from a photograph, I think the person. Do you see what I'm doing? So easily. Remember, her feet were this high, and now they're going all the way down. And the paint allows it. When people say to me, Hedy, how long will it take to do a painting? I don't remember who it was that answered. I think it was, I don't know. But an artist was asked this, and he said, until it's done. That bracelet stops the flow of her arm, and I can't afford that. But I told you, I wanted to do red, but I can't do it until her feet are established. Mm -hmm. Oil makes rules, and they are wonderful rules. And if you don't obey them, it's your tough luck. Dina and Jeff, keep working on this. I need, I need my hand not to shake. See, maybe if I just keep my arm completely flat and don't have to hold it up like this, whoops, it shook. But I have wonderful rags. There's a friend of mine, Sue Hansen, 
who used to always bring me. I think that position is difficult, Mom. I think it's hard. It's not. It's hard for you like this. It is hard. We need to find you something else. No, no, it is. But I have no choice. I learned to say thank you that I'm allowed to do this. But I think if I do this in the early morning, my hand will shake less. Of course, Johanna. If I would give you black stockings, no, mm -hmm. can't. It would be wrong. But at least all of you know that this painting will be done and will be beautiful no matter how long it takes. So if that's a lesson I can teach today, it's worth it. Okay, let me do this. If you can't get one thing, you get something else. So let me do the background here. Much better. And if not, I'm going to do it in the early morning when my hand is much stronger. Unless Jeff and Dina can create something wonderful for me. Let me tell you that Ed Weedman says your fortitude to persevere is always amazing. Yeah, but look at the result. Mm -hmm. And Kent says, hi, Hedy. He's watching from Sweden. Lauren Roth is watching. Oh, there you go. Tell them I love them. See, as difficult as this is, it is only difficult because at the moment, the paint is wet. In the morning, it would be much drier and one color would not flow into the other the way it does. You know what I learned so much? When I was working as a volunteer with children with special needs I learned that the parents of those children never give up. See, we're coming mm -hmm. and I've repeated this often already, but it is one of my most important lessons in my life when little Craig had, did not move his tongue and the doctor said he has to move his tongue and they didn't know what to do until one day when I came they said peanut butter did it they put peanut butter on his gums and he loved it so he licked it and he could lick Okay, now, I don't have to worry because tomorrow or maybe the day after Johanna's feet will be dry. And I can repair the curves of her beautiful legs. 
which I botched up today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work now, it will tomorrow. And if it doesn't work tomorrow, it'll work the day after. What I want to do, Kenny says I have two minutes left. I realized that I never said thank you to the universe who is doing the same thing I'm trying to do, trying to do something when nature itself stops me. Let's keep on doing because it's worth it. It is so worth it. I love you all. Bye-bye.